I wanted to also ask you about executive authority. I mean, you're not running for president. You're running to be a check on the no. president, theoretically <laughs> speaking. Um, but I mean, we've kind of seen this really troubling trend that started really um, substantially with the Bush administration, where, yeah. you know, executive authority has been expanded. And then that trend didn't stop with Obama. He also increased the power of the executive. Trump is now taking that to what seems to be a really um, dangerous conclusion you know when you go so far in terms of like increasing power we start to see you know more dictatorial methods and we see basically an occupying force in portland currently you know against the um consent of the governor and you know the uh the mayor of portland ted wheeler and this is my city and it feels really weird to see like to feel like we have this invading force that's not foreign it's the federal government so i mean you know this is a state's rights issue and i don't hear conservatives saying, you know, the, the state states rights conservatives, <laughs> you know, speaking right. out. So I, I'm curious, right. what could you do in this instance? Because let's let's assume that Joe Biden actually does beat Donald Trump and the polls hold. I mean, I, I would suspect that he'd expand his federal power as well. And now that kind of we've seen this precedent with Donald Trump, I wouldn't be surprised if, let's say, like, hypothetically speaking, this is all speculative, Donald Trump refused to concede and riots broke out in a state like Alabama in support of Donald Trump, then Joe Biden can do what Trump did and send in the Fed. So we're going to see this trend continue on. And I don't think it's going to end with, you know, Donald Trump's tenure in the White House. So is there anything that you can do as a senator or would try to push for to rein in the power of the executive? I mean, we saw that attempted with um, the power to wage war, you know, Bernie Sanders yeah. and Mike Lee, they actually got that bill passed. You know, this was influenced in the House by Ro Khanna and Trump vetoed it. So what other steps could you take to rein in the power of the executive? Because this is something that does actually worry me increasingly, especially considering, you know, the trajectory that we're on. Right. Yeah. No, it, I share that concern because we have given up so much of that check and so much of the privacy that you know Americans had in the name of security in a lot of ways. And I think that it's important in moments of crisis when people are looking for safety to really think about what they might be giving up. Because I think that's how we got here in a lot of ways. You know, it, after particularly September 11th and the feeling that everyone had of just wanting to be safe and protected has really put us on this trajectory. So I think it's, a lot of it can come from rhetoric in some ways. Like so much of what ha has been the message that we get from anyone in government has been a lot of fear has been about, you know, terrorists, has been about you know, tr Donald Trump running on undocumented immigrants being the problem. And that's why so many people were calling for the abolishment of ICE, because this is what ICE has been doing to undocumented immigrants for years. And now we're seeing it extended beyond that one group. And I'm glad that people's eyes are being open to that, but they need to recognize that this has been going on and this is this is authority that we gave up out of fear. So I think it's really important to talk more about like <laughs> to run on hope and the the concept of actually building something better, not run on fear, because I think when you put people in that place of fear and crisis, um, they're more willing to kind of go along with giving up of these rights. So there's that element. The other thing is that we need to be obstructionists if we need to be obstructionists. Like when you vote to increase the military budget and create a space force and extend FISA and all of these things, you are going along with it. So then to turn around and say, oh, we didn't really want Trump to, to do this. Well, what have you done to set to to raise the alarm before that? And that's, I think, something that needs to be done more publicly as well is to talk about like what are you actually opposing when you oppose something and for what reason and i think in this moment we have to really think about you make the point of you know conservatives don't seem to be saying that this is a state's rights issue and and they're oddly quiet on it in fact i've I kind of called this out and some of the responses I got was, well, then they shouldn't be defacing property or rioting. And it's like, okay, well, they're using 
the federal, these federal agents to take away First Amendment rights. What if it's now Second Amendment rights? How are you going to feel about that? And they'll say, you know, they'll come out with their guns and they'll def they'll defend themselves. But the federal government has drones. The federal government has a much more intense arsenal. And I think that we really have to make sure that we are appealing to people like from the direction that it's going to make sense for them. Because yes, maybe people oppose the protesters that are going on, but I think you can expose to them the, the slippery slope that this might be and really talk through how like we have to demand that these powers get reeled, reeled back in. And I think we have to use the, the power of the ability to not approve budgets to enact some of the change that we need to see to basically restrict the funds, restrict the way they can be used and, and protect people that way. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you said that. This is why I think that like your election is so crucial because we, we don't have really um, that many voices that are like yours in the Senate. I mean, people are either unprincipled or complicit. I mean, in the sense of being unprincipled, Republicans are silent. They're OK with it because someone on their team is the one who's doing this. Right. Um, and when it comes to Democrats, as you alluded to, I mean, Chris Coons is largely complicit. I mean, how many times have Democrats voted to expand Donald Trump's military budgets and, you know, the power of the federal government to spy on Americans illegally, uh, which is mm -hmm. obviously unconstitutional. So, I right. mean, even just like I think the step of not being complicit in and of itself um, would be huge, which is why we right. have to elect people like you, because the current status quo, like the corporate Democrats in office, they are enabling Donald Trump. I mean, they can use the rhetoric that they want. They can say, I don't like it when he does this. But at the end of the day, you are the one who are giving him this authority to do that. If you continuously mm -hmm. vote on bills uh, that give him the power that uh, approve his federal judges that basically take what he does that's unconstitutional and legitimize them, right? And say, you know, yeah. I, I approve of this. So it, it's troubling, which is why, I mean, this election is so, so important. Um, and even if people may be disappointed with the results of the uh, presidential primary, I mean, there are so many great candidates, including yourself, to where this is still so, so crucial, you know, that we change the makeup of Congress.